Hey guys, how's it going? So this morning I'm out here in the vegetable garden getting ready to do just a couple of things. I've got some sweet potatoes that I need to harvest. In fact, I gotta look back and see what date I planted those. Hold on, it was late. July 3rd, that's when I put them in the ground. And honestly, I'd had those slips for two months in the greenhouse in a plastic bag before I planted them. Some of them didn't take because they were just like kind of black and slimy. And I just thought, you know what? I have these, I finally have some garden space open for them. Uh, may as well just put them in the ground and they turn into quite a nice abundant looking crop in terms of leaves. I have no idea what's going on under the soil. I did try to poke my fingers around in there yesterday and didn't feel a single thing. So I don't know. I don't know if we're going to have any sweet potatoes, but I also wanted to put some crop protectors over like my lettuce and uh, radishes and spinach possibly just to get a little more life out of some of my crops. We're supposed to get our first light frost tonight and a lot of these things can handle that but tomorrow not tomorrow <laughs> next week we're supposed to get down into the low 20s so it's time to start thinking about that so I just wanted to show you a few different options you can use in your garden space uh, to extend your harvest season. And this is what I've got going on down here. Russell ever present. Also, this right here, I showed it in our garden tour recently. It's a three-in-one chicken wire cloach. It's extendable. So this is from Gardener Supply, and I think it's kind of newish, but it comes to where you can get like the ends, just the ends that clip together. Um, and you can also get like these extenders for the center part, which is so awesome because you can make it the length you need it. And if I scoot this, you can see it's almost the length of one of our beds. It's almost six feet long when you use the two extenders. And I put it in here over these two rows of lettuce because Russell kept getting in there and laying down and messing up my seeds. And I had to reseed. You can tell these two rows came up great. These two rows didn't come up as good. Um, and so I had to kind of protect them somehow. So I used that, worked great. And then right here, I used some of the other chicken wire cloches that are smaller and just lined them up next to each other. And this lettuce really is beautiful. Isn't it the most gorgeous thing? This is the, well, I had Marvel of Four Seasons in these two rows, it didn't really come up nicely. You can see the difference. There's the Marvel of Four Seasons and then Butter Crunch for the rest. And then we've got radishes over there. Here are the sweet potatoes, totally swallowing up my boxwood. It's supposed to look like that right there. And they've just gone nuts. It's a three by four bed. So if nothing else, I'll have a ton of vines to, to cut back and add to our pile out on the new property. A little update on the garlic. It's coming up very nicely. And our kale and green onions doing great. Lacinato kale, dwarf blue curled scotch kale, and then green onions by seed. Get in closer so you can see the seed ones and then the ones planted by little sets, little bulbs. Garlic in that bed. Looks like somebody's been pawing around a bit. Beautiful zinnias. So colorful and just happy. And then we've got spinach in this bed right here. Looks beautiful. And then our other bed of sweet peas, or sweet potatoes rather. I think Erin is also gonna be working on putting some winterizer down on our grass today. So we'll just have those little projects going on. Just a few more things to check off the list for fall. I'm heading to the barn now. I'm gonna grab some digging a digging fork and my kneeling pad and we'll see what's underneath that beautiful sweet potato foliage i think i'm going to use this cart today see the beauty of this cart see how there's water in there it's got this feature where you can just pour whatever's in there out very easily and then it just snaps right back. Gloves, kneeling pad. And while we're in here, I thought I'd show you guys the new set of stairs we just had built. So you might remember the old set. It was in the furthest bay to the left, which there's work being done in there right now. Um, it was, oh boy, they were rickety at best. They had no railing. They were way uh, more narrow than these are. We had this set built four feet wide with three railings. <laughs> I mean, you'd have to try really hard to fall between those railings. And they're just really sturdy and nice. Oh my goodness. So happy to have these in. The stairs was one of those things that we knew from the moment we moved in we needed to change, uh, but it took us four years to get to it. No big deal. Looking for a pop-up bag. Are they all 
gone. You know what, I'll just use this for any possible sweet potatoes that come out of the ground. Nope, nope, not ready. Gotta get some Falcos. Okay, so here's the plan. I'm gonna cut all of the leaves back first and expose the raised bed so I can actually see where to dig and then we'll start digging. I forgot to mention the variety I planted is called Beauregard, which is one of the most popular varieties of sweet potatoes because it's got a sh little bit of a shorter season, like I think 80 to 95 days, which these have been in the ground longer than that. They've been in the ground for over 100 days. There should be some sweet potatoes under there, um, I hope. Uh, and they're very disease resistant and, and those sorts of things. So anyway, Let's get started. But you're gonna have to move because this is where I'm putting all the leaves. Huge amount of leaves right there. Well, what does Russell have? What do you have, buddy? Did you catch something? Oh, your own tail. <laughs> Classic. Russell, what are you doing? <laughs> You're kind of a nerd. You know that? Okay, not on camera, bud. <laughs> anyway, a lot of leaves. I got kind of a mess going on around it. I'll have to rake this area up. And Kind of not seeing a whole lot of action just from the top here. I could see this. That looks like a potato. So that's promising. So now we dig. So far, I only have one out of that section. That doesn't bode well for me. Oh, here comes Aaron. I see you have a <laughs> having some spreader problems, are you? I'm going to get a new spreader. This is stupid. You have to hold it open. Let me come you out there. You have to hold it closed, too. Oh, you do? Yeah, you got to hold oh. it closed or open. You got that full of winterizer? Yeah. I nice. Do. Look at this. This is junk. So if you let it go, it's supposed to be like this. When you let it go, uh -huh. it falls back. And then as you drive around, it just wiggles open. Oh, I experienced that yesterday with grass seeding. Yeah. <laughs> I did the whole thing and then I looked back and had a hopper full of seeds still. <laughs> like, what the heck? So, time for a new spreader probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. John Deere. <laughs> so winterizer is something you can apply to your grass like September through November. Yeah. And well, it's just depending on your, your, your climate. climate, right? So here we are, middle of October. Typically, we usually shoot for the first of October for all of those sorts of things. We're a little bit late, but it's still fairly warm, even though we're expecting our first light frost. I don't know. It's still going to be good for the root system of the grass. And that's the only thing that we're like shooting for. It's not to promote a bunch of new growth or anything like that. It's to promote a really strong root system. So in the spring, your grass picks up and it looks beautiful, like right from the gate. Yeah. So how much more do you have left to do? Not a lot, and you know what? I'm not winterizing the front lawn because we're going to tear it all oh, up. Oh, that's spring. true. So it saves you a little work. Yeah, so nice. I'm not even going to worry about that. Hey, do you want to see my sweet potato harvest so far? Sure. It's impressive. Prepare yourself. Okay. Is that good? That's one. Okay. <laughs> I, don't know, of, I don't know what I'm looking at. Out of this whole area. Okay. <laughs> I'm a little afraid to dig up the rest of it. I'm afraid there's nothing under here. Oh, really? Yeah. It was a pretty uh, look for a it while really though. Wet. It is. I think is it still running? Uh-huh. Yeah, I forgot to turn it off, so oh. I just turned the faucet off this morning. Yeah. So, it's fine. I mean, I can dig in it, but definitely heavier than normal. This might be my fail for this year. It happens. <laughs> all right, so Aaron's going to go finish winterizing the grass while I finish just kind of I feel like all I'm doing is just tilling the soil at this point. No sweet potatoes, just tilling the soil. It's all good.
had better harvest than this before, <laughs> but it's better than nothing. I think I got maybe 10, 15 pounds. Last time I did sweet potatoes, I got about 50 pounds, but I planted them at the proper time uh, and they had a lot longer to mature in the ground. I found that when I was digging, I had a lot that looked like this, like they were starting to form. They just hadn't had a chance to bulk up yet. And I didn't save most of those. I saved a couple just to show you. And you can tell I most definitely have two different varieties here. Not really sure what happened there, but I've got an orange skin with orange flesh and a red skin with orange flesh. You can see all the difference there in the tub. And I did give them a quick rinse just because they were so muddy. I totally forgot to cut the water to those beds. So that's why I'm dealing with that. So at this point, I need to let these cure. They need to sit somewhere at about 75, 80 degrees for two weeks in order for them to formulate their sugars, to condense their sugars. If we were to eat them right now, they wouldn't really taste like a sweet potato, not yet anyway. So I'll be taking these inside. That's where they're gonna cure because they're not gonna get a consistent 75, 80 outside. At this point, it's just a little bit too cold. Uh, and then at the end of that two week period, we can eat them right away. There's not enough of them to worry about storing this year, but I'm, you know, I'm happy with whatever we got out of those beds because at the, at the moment I planted those, I really hadn't, didn't have any other plans for those beds and I wanted to get something in them and they looked pretty. And I was encouraged when I was digging in that soil because even though it was super muddy, it was still really crumbly and it was teeming with earthworms. And whenever you see that, I'm just like, there's so much, so many good things going on in this soil and that's always encouraging to see. Uh, so now I actually have two beds open. If I can find the right protectors, I might run some soil heat cables and get some more crops going. So I'm gonna actually just let these sit outside for a couple hours and dry off just because I gave them a little quick rinse with the hose and then I'll put them inside. So that's sweet potatoes. Now I actually have a cover I got for this two by four raised bed. This is the cocktail garden. Um, and I have it behind the barn. I need to do a little clean out, like I need to remove the tomato and just groom it up a bit. And then we'll put the protective cover on. So this is kind of end of season, what it's looking like. It was super productive. So there is a good hearted tomato, which you can see it's done. Even if I were to try to eat some of these like this, it would taste weird because of our cold temperatures. So I'm gonna take that out. There's a stevia and a mazel basil. This is an amethyst basil, which you guys, it was so strange because it grew green and it looked a tiny bit sick through the summer. And I just recently cut it back and all the new growth is the dark purple. Isn't that gorgeous? Uh, strawberries in here. You can see a rosemary peeking through. Let me scoot around this way. There's a hot and heavy pepper which I may just, it's looking kind of sad, but I may just leave it and see what happens, see if I can get at least these to ripen. There's a uh, purple sage, a tricolor sage, more strawberries, and a thyme plant. Look at this basil. It becomes like a shrub. So all my protective covers are behind the barn. We already have them all put together. Aaron's already working on stretching Christmas lights. <laughs> so this is actually one I'm gonna put out today. This is a four by eight size. It's called, um, a three season plant protection tent. Isn't that awesome? So it's got this uh, lightweight frame here and then this really nice with vents plastic cover to keep extra heat in on your crops. And then you can access, there's little zippers where you can zip these up, roll them up and access all of your crops. So my beds are three by six. So I thought, well, I wonder if I could just pop this right over the top and just have it set on the ground, like of the lettuce bed, I think that would work. And my two by four protective cover is about around here somewhere, there it is. Here we go. So this is what we're gonna go put on that raised bed. So let's do that quick. Well, that was easy. I just kind of slid it over the top of all the plants, tucked them all in there, and then the whole frame tucks down inside the raised bed. So it just fits right inside there and it's like snug. It kind of almost snaps in place. 
so I don't feel like it's gonna go anywhere and it didn't while it was behind the barn of course it's a little bit more protected back there but even when it was sitting on the ground it just stayed put and you can open it from the front here roll it up and it just has these toggles to keep it up and you can also open this too like if you need extra ventilation you can open that there's a little screen right here and then you can roll this down and it looks like there's extra toggles there where you can have this one down too. Anyway, I'm super pleased with that, with how easy it was. I'll have to leave the flap open during the day because it's still, it gets full sun in the afternoon and it's still a little bit warm in the afternoons to keep it down. But then I can come roll it down quick for the evenings and probably get quite a lot longer out of these things. And that's kind of the same idea with this great big uh, protective cover that I want to put over one of the raised beds. I don't know that I can, it's really lightweight, but I don't know if I can manage getting it over there because it's kind of awkward to carry. Let me try. I might need to ask Aaron for some assistance. Well, it's definitely a little big for this raised bed, but so awesome. I actually wanted the four by eight size because I was going to use it out in the cut flower garden, but I didn't plant things in a way where it kind of makes sense to use it out there. So I thought this would be the perfect way. And then I could extend my lettuce season a little bit, which will be wonderful. And it just popped right over the top. I do, do think it comes in a three by six size though, which is something I should probably order because I've got four three by six beds in here. And it would be nice to have them all lined up. I'd have two here and then two where the other Xenia beds are. And so this just works kind of the same as the other one. It has three flaps. I don't need to open this one, I don't think, today. I think this will be plenty of airflow. Um, you just unzip them, roll them up, tie them off. And then there are vents that you can undo on the sides. Like maybe it's really cold out and you want to leave these down, but you still want nice airflow. So you can leave those two little windows open really cool and there's one more thing i wanted to grab behind the barn it's not like a protective cover it's called a chicken wire crop coop and i think it's kind of new um gardener's supply sent it out and it's something that i really wanted to use in the chicken coop actually let me show it to you so here it is a little hard to see back here let's take it to the vegetable garden Isn't that the coolest looking thing? I have never seen a cloche that looks like that. My intention, like I said, was to use it in the chicken coop. I thought I could because of its compact size and the run is pretty big for the chickens. I thought I could just like seed some grass or a really fast growing crop in there, like inside this to protect it from the chickens. And then once it was up, I could lift this whole thing off, move it to a different location in the run, start a new crop so that the chickens could have something to mess around with in there. Um, and right now, like I could still do that technically, but this stuff is coming out of our garden so quickly, like overgrown produce or things we're cleaning out. The chickens are getting so much right now that I don't really think it's necessary to actually grow stuff, but I kind of want to start a rotation of growing new crops in there for them next year and this will be a really fun and pretty way to do it uh, because it doesn't open like there's no little doors that open uh, you just use the handles and lift the whole thing off whatever you're protecting and you could use this on whatever like it looks cute right here so I think that's gonna be it for today's video I just really wanted to get those sweet potato beds cleaned out I knew that tonight when we get that even that light frost sweet potato leaves like they're super susceptible to cold and it would have just kind of been a mess tomorrow they would have been all black and shriveled up um, so I thought it would be a good day to come out and get those cleared up and I'm happy that we'll have several meals from what I harvested today I mean it wasn't a bang up crop but it's also never a loss because you always learn something from it like my takeaway from this year is not to buy the slips at the beginning of May and then plant them in July. <laughs> Don't wait two months to put them in the ground and you may have a little bit more luck. Um, you know, the protective coverings too, it'll be really nice to see how far those extend our harvest. And you know, every fall is different. This one has been really easy on us. Last year was a little bit tougher because we got an early, really cold snap. Um, and I'm kind of trying to get these things out early so that if that happens to us, it won't take everything 
I do intend on coming out and possibly, I think I mentioned running a heat cable in a couple of the beds, putting more protective covers out and get some other uh, cold hardy crops started. Some more greens, spinach, um, more lettuce, stuff like that. And while I was doing that, Aaron got the grass winterized. So it's been a very productive morning. It always feels good to get those things done and checked off the list. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.